Lately, not a single industry event or an analysis goes by without AI cropping up as a key topic and point of interest for the ecosystem. Telecom players are increasingly looking at the latest developments and considerations on AI, as the technology is said to disrupt the sector. To dive further into this hot topic, I'm happy to be joined by Raj Yavadkar, Chief Technology Officer at Juniper Networks. Hi Raj. So, as we've seen already, AI continues to proliferate across all aspects of technology and the network is no different. How is this technology being used to manage network operations? Oh, that's a very good question. So, about four years back, uh, Juniper Networks, through its Mist Wi-Fi product, was the first in the industry to introduce AI ops-driven cloud management or network management. So, for example, in the network operations, you have day zero, day one, day two activities. All those three of those can be now automated and managed using AI ops. So, for example, for day two operations, what we do is that we set service level expectations per user or per device connected to Wi-Fi network, like an endpoint like iPhone or MacBook. And based on observing the network behavior against the expected service level expectations, you find any anomalies. And based on those, you try to troubleshoot the network proactively. So some of our customers, like a Fortune 1 customer, as well as one of the largest couriers in the world, have publicly stated how 90% of their troubleshooting tickets get self-resolved using AI ops. Now what we have done is that we have extended that model to what we call client to cloud. That means start from the endpoint, Wi-Fi network, extended to campus and branch switching networks, access network, SD-WAN, all the way to the cloud, and provide AI ops managed network. That's a very powerful concept in terms of automating and creating sort of a self-driving network using AI ops. And AI is expanding into the data center, and Juniper has a strong point of view on how it can be utilized. How do you see it evolving? So data center is another very interesting area, which is very different than campus branch networks. In a data center, we already use what we call intent-based automation using our Upstar networking product. What that does is it provides a closed loop automation for the entire data center network. That allows it to constantly get telemetry out of the network and check it against the intent stated by the customer and do automatic corrections. Now the next step is to expand it to use machine learning and artificial intelligence. So what we're looking at is, suppose you have a data center application like a database application running in a data center. And if it goes bad or something is not working, people immediately blame the network. So what we call is mean time to innocence. How can we quickly determine whether the network is a problem or not? And if network is the problem, we want to also reduce the time to resolve, mean time to resolve. So what we're doing is we're collecting telemetry from entire application stack, starting from the application, the, the uh, operating system, hypervisor, network interface card, and the network itself. Across all these layers, we use machine learning model to do correlation. And by correlating the events and alerts observed in each of these layers, we are able to point out whether the network is the problem or the problem is somewhere else. That's the mean time to innocence. And when the problem is somewhere else, we're also able to pinpoint whether it is in a uh, hypervisor, it is in an uh, application stack, wherever it is. So that's a very powerful concept we are bringing to data center operations using artificial intelligence. That's a good point. And there's been a lot of positive work across the industry with 5G and open run. How do you see operators taking advantage of AI in this area? Yeah, so that's a very good point. ORAN is a strategic inflection point in my opinion. It's really disaggregating the radio access network for the first time in its history to really allow a very strong ecosystem of players to contribute to the network. So we developed something called RAN Intelligence Controller, RIC, which is the operating system for the RAN. And it has a visibility across multiple cell sites. The advantage of that is that now you can start optimizing the network operations using artificial intelligence across the radio access network. There are multiple examples of that. So, for example, we have built a, built a partner ecosystem for third-party vendors to develop X apps and R apps using machine learning. And we are developing some of our own applications also. So, an example of such applications of machine learning are, one is spectrum optimization. Spectrum is one of the most valuable property in the radio access network. 
And if you can optimize the use of the spectrum, make it more efficient using artificial intelligence, there's a huge value to that. Second is energy efficiency. Radio access networks consume a lot of energy, especially radios consume as much as 20% of the energy in the network. How do you manage the radios so that you can create more energy efficiency out of that? What artificial intelligence allows us to do is that observe the network behavior, look at the network utilization, how the devices are moving, and apply machine learning to create more energy efficient operation of the network by turning off base stations, turning off cell sites, transferring load from one cell site to another, and so on. And the third example of artificial intelligence or machine learning application is admission control. That you can now start applying across multiple cell sites knowledge about how the network is being utilized, which devices are coming and going, and apply it for slicing and for admission control. So all these three things are really good examples of applying machine learning to so-called ORAN-based open networks. As one of the major network equipment providers, how are you incorporating Gen AI into the customer support experience? Yeah, so as you pointed out earlier, the last one year, Gen AI has taken the whole world by storm, right? We cannot go around, uh, talk to anyone and not find out that they're looking at using open AI or chat GPT or some kind of generative AI. And what we are doing is that there is a lot of applications of Gen AI for customer support. For example, if you take L1 support, a lot of L1 support is based on answering questions, basic questions based on the documentation on the products or the logs observed by the customers. You can easily automate that using generative AI. Generative AI can generate answers based on the documents and logs we train the model for. Second one is predictive RMA. Rather than having the customer having to file a request for RMA or a part replacement, using predictive analytics and artificial intelligence, you can start predictively discover or predict when the parts need to be replaced and proactively do so. That's another powerful concept we are trying to follow, uh, uh, follow on here in customer support. A rising concern for all organizations are sustainability requirements. What's the role of AI here? Uh, that's a very good question. So if you look at sustainability of uh, a network, uh, networking, it has multiple aspects when it comes to a product company like Juniper. We have to start worrying about sustainability right from the supply chain where our products are built. Uh, packaging, e cooling, there are options of liquid cooling versus air cooling, and as well as network operations. And I can see artificial intelligence playing a role in all these aspects on end-to-end -end basis. For example, in supply chain, we can use artificial intelligence to start collecting data uh, in various parts of our manufacturing assembly to see how we can optimize operations to reduce the amount of energy used. Packaging, we are beginning to replace our traditional packaging with more sustainable packaging. There again, we can track the data about how the packaging is used so that we can start optimizing it using artificial intelligence. We are already applying uh, for our high-end products liquid or immersion cooling. That can save lots of energy by quickly cooling down the equipment. And now the network operations itself. If you look at the time series, series data on the network utilization, of any large network like core network or access network, you'll see that network utilization varies a lot depending on time of the day, the middle of the day or the middle of the night. Sometimes the network utilization can be as low as 10 to 20%. In that case, if you have this time series data, we can use artificial intelligence to start predicting what the network utilization is going to be at a particular time of the day or night and proactively turn off line cards or parts of the fabric because in the chassis based router, we have multiple line cards with redundancy built in, its own fabric connecting the line cards to each other. So there's a lot of opportunity to optimize which line cards are used, which are active, which are turned down, so that we can save lots of energy. So artificial intelligence plays a lot of role into that also. Raj, it's been a pleasure hearing your take on the role of AI on network operations management and sustainability. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.